we are a party of ideas. And anytime we are engaging the Ghanaian people, it is about our manifesto. We, don't, we do not <coughs> go into hallucinations about who is killing what pastor, who is demolishing mosques, and all of that. We don't engage in those hallucinations. We speak to ideas, we speak to our manifesto, and we speak to the forward march of our country. Come on. million dollars. Under the guise of coming to deliver a sky train, and you heard the chief will talk about it, and fail to deliver, they show very quickly, as soon as the election results are announced, if they don't want oral officials, operation, recover all root officials, and I'm praying, I'm lobbying hard to be part of that team. We must you know, as my deputy. We are lobbying very hard. If they don't want any trouble with the Ghanaian people, they should just prefer to refund our two million dollars for that very dubious sky train project. You are even struggling with your railways. Mm -hmm. Land, land, you are nowhere. And then suddenly, you say you are moving into the skies. For those of you who have followed our latest exposés, if you think that these policies are not important, just follow our latest exposés and see what we are losing. Did you follow the latest exposé on the cantonment's lands? The lands at La Wales, AU village. You saw how cheaply they sold them. Can you believe cantonment's land? They were selling a plot for just 183,000 Ghana cities. Can you believe that? And if you, if you see the top officials, I've published the list, nobody can challenge that list. Kate Jemfua, she bought her 31st August 2022, the MPP Women's Organizer, Ibrahim Mohamed Awad, then Minister of Tourism, 30th November 2020, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ines Yedu Addison, 31st August 2022, Elsie Yadu Awaji, Deputy Governor, 27th August 2020, Maxwell Opoku Afari, Deputy Governor, Bank of Ghana, he bought his from President Akufuado, 31st August 2022. Joseph Wani Enu, the CEO of Kokobo, bought his from the President, 30th October 2020. Dr. Janet Ampedufo, the Chairperson Presidential Emoluments Committee, also bought hers from President Akufuado on 29th June 2022. Kwabna Mante Jektenyako, board member, Ghana Airport Company, President Akufuado's appointee. Bought his from President Kufuado on 22nd October 2022. His Excellency Anselm Raswell, Ajay Tesowa, Ghana Side Commissioner to Canada. Also bought his from President Kufuado on 14 October 2020. Anna Asare Odro, former MPP Women's Organizer, Holland Chapter. Bought his from President Kufuado on 25th February 2021. Ken Oforiata's Enterprise Assurance. You know Ken Oforiata doesn't miss out. Uh, <laughs> Enterprise Assurance. Enterprise Life Assurance. Can of Rata's Enterprise Life Assurance. 15 December 2023 is when he grabbed his from his cousin. This was a family affair. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, corrupt, the corruption which has engulfed this country has also taken over scholarships. So you have politically exposed persons, ministers, MPs, government officials, top, top politicians, Fighting with the vulnerable, poor vulnerable people in North Tong, people Prugu Yoyo, Savlugu, in Adaklu, and elsewhere, why and elsewhere. Brilliant but needy people. Fighting with top politicians, elite who are so endowed, who have resources. They are grabbing the scholarships for themselves. And we all know the story. One of them is uh, out there campaigning. He didn't even show remorse. You know, he has, he has no shame. Emissions levy, e levy, COVID levy, betting levy, and uh, more importantly, the reform she spoke about, you know, of the VAT, very important. We want to exempt micro and small businesses from paying VAT. We want to abolish the 3% VAT flat rate and introduce a standard uniform VAT, uh, you know, administration system. and. The sweetener is a two-year tax holiday for new, micro, and small businesses because we want them to have a certain respite, you know, sound, peace of mind, if I can put it that way, you know, to 
establish themselves properly before they begin to pay corporate taxes and personal income taxes. And these are policies that we believe would create the necessary congenial atmosphere for businesses to thrive. Because let's face it, Nivea is gone, Latin T is gone, Big Pen is gone, Globo is gone, Junior Foods is gone. All these businesses are leaving Ghana and they are not going to the United States of America. No, they are not going to first world countries. They are leaving to Nigeria. They are leaving to Côte d'Ivoire. They are leaving, leaving to Nestle too. That should tell you that Ghana has lost its place of pride as a preferred destination for FDI and business investments. And that is what John Mahama and the NDC uh, are promising to bring back. And finally, to emphasize that the Women's Development Bank is something that we will need you, the media, to trumpet. First of its kind, clear game changer, that is going to ensure that Kenyan women are able to rise again. And for me, the catch there is that all the workers will be women. It's important that we stress that. And Shamima is very particular about that. The gender people are very particular about that. The bank managers will be women. Uh, the tellers, the staff, the board members, the in fact, the, the drivers and security personnel will all be women. Because we believe in the capacity of a woman, the Ghanaian woman, to manage you know, their own affairs. So, with these few words, um, we thank our, our sister Sajida for that beautiful presentation of business development. We are now moving to the last subject for today. A very important subject. Because you can have all the brilliant policies, all the far-reaching, work thought through policies for infrastructure development, for business development, and what have you. But without good governance, without combating and controlling corruption, you will go nowhere. Because that actually is our bane. Waste, profligacy, opulence, greed, selfishness, negativity, and corruption. And John Mahama is promising a new paradigm shift. You heard him speak about some of the key policies that you'll be rolling out to promote good governance and to combat corruption. But today, the Son of Man will be taking us into the details of our policies. You know who the Son of Man is? <laughs> the ranking member of the scandal. Uh, and the member of parliament for the good people of North Tom. I think he's doing a human's job, not only for his constituency, but for Mother Ghana. With a round of applause, let's work on it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, okay. Comrade Sami Jemfi. And let me commend the previous speakers who have very diligently and inspiringly dealt with the manifesto and how beautiful is it to observe that we in the NDC, we continue to engage the Ghanaian people on sound policies. We are a party of ideas and anytime we are engaging the Ghanaian people, it is about our manifesto. We, don't, we do not go into hallucinations about who is killing what pastor, who is demolishing mosques and all of that. We don't engage in those hallucinations. We speak to ideas, we speak to our manifesto, and we speak to the forward march of our country. As has been indicated, we are very deliberate in our manifesto about promoting good governance and combating corruption. All of what has been discussed, if we do not have a leader who will anchor every other sector, every other policy proposition on good governance, we cannot achieve our objectives. Without good governance, Corruption will reign supreme. Nepotism will be the order of the day. Cronism will run amok. 
and opportunities that must come to all Ghanaians will be denied to the people of this country. Only a few will benefit. And that is why we in the NDC are talking about resetting Ghana. Our manifesto is anchored in resetting Ghana. Those who are talking about an upgrade, what upgrade simply means is that we want to come and worsen the current debilitating conditions. We want to come and worsen your plight. How can you upgrade corruption? How can you upgrade state capture? How can you upgrade cronyism? How can you upgrade nepotism? How can you upgrade hardships? How can you upgrade economic crisis? What this country needs is a total u turn a total overhaul, a total reset. That is why throughout the nook and crannies of our country, the NDC manifesto has been so embraced, so welcome. I was observing recent polls that you in the media have been carrying out on which of the manifestos offers hope, which of the manifestos the Ghanaian people believe will be transformative and response to the needs of the people. And I'm not surprised that all the polls, overwhelmingly, the NDC manifesto has emerged victorious as a manifesto that resonates with the people. So I'll run through our big ticket items on governance and combating corruption. Number one, key amongst them, constitutional reforms. If you read the NBC Resetting Ghana Manifesto, President Mahama is pledging major constitutional reforms. Fortunately for the NBC, Professor John Ivanzata Mills has done the heavy lift. God bless his soul. May his soul rest in perfect peace. He set up the Constitution Review Commission. Over 700 pages of work conducted. President Mahama is saying that his mentor's work will not go waste. Remember that before we left office, he set up a Constitution Implementation Committee chaired by Professor E. V. O. Dangwa. Unfortunately, the Akufuado Baumia government abandoned constitutional reform. We are saying that we are going to go back to the Constitution Review Commission's report, go back to the Professor E. V. O. Dankwa's Implementation Committee report, and we will implement the recommendations. These proposals will be anchored on reducing the power of the president. Many experts, many governors, Analysts have decried the overbearing nature of the constitution, which creates an imperialist president, a president who has so much power and is virtually uncontrolled. It is only in the NBC that you can find presidents who will say that even though the constitution gives us so much power. We want to curtail those powers. So Professor Mill set up the Constitution Review Commission. President Mahama set up the Constitution Implementation Committee. And again, President Mahama is saying that he is going to go back to constitutional reforms, conclude the work that was done, and we are really glad about that. Some of the things you will see at the end of this constitutional reform process is that, for example, we are going to have MMDC is elected, we are no longer going to appoint them. For example, you are going to see at the end of this constitutional review process that parliament is going to be strengthened. That constitutional provision which says that majority of ministers should come from parliament is going to stop so that you decide you either want to be a legislator or you want to be an executive. The president is also then going to have a free hand to appoint ministers from everywhere best brains, best expertise to help him develop this country. He is not going to be restrained because of the constitutional provision. 
key amongst the constitutional review items that you can expect is that President Mahama is saying that we are going to take a second look at Article 71 of our constitution. So as Gracia will be abolished. He does not believe that we should continue with this practice of education to a few Article 71 office holders. And in the process, he is going to put together the Presidential Involvement Committee, combine that with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. So we have one body. So we don't have two class of workers in our country, Article 71 workers who are treated specially and differently and then the rest of the Ghanaian workforce. So these are some of the key highlights that you are going to see at the end of the constitutional reforms that are going to take place under incoming President John Gramani Mahama, inshallah. When you also read the manifesto, President Mahama is promising a new paradigm of ethical and incorruptible leadership. He says that he is going to lead by example. So the fight against corruption is not going to be fighting the corruption of my predecessor. Everything that happens by my appointees, I am a clearing agent, so I don't see it. President Mahama is saying that he will not be a clearing agent. He will expect the highest standard of ethical and incorruptible leadership. If you cannot meet that gold standard, then you have no business serving in his government. And I think that we have to applaud President Mahama for that. <laughs> President Mahama is also saying that he is going to drastically reduce the size of government by appointing not more than 60 ministers. And you've heard him say this time without number. He's very passionate about it. In addition to that, if you read our manifesto, some people had 60 and then they ran to go implement it, to go announce 50. Uh, when they are the people with the worst record under this fourth Republican dispensation, appointing over 100 ministers. But you see, they just stop at uh, 50 ministers. We go beyond. The NDC manifesto is saying that we are going to streamline and realign the government. There is no reason why we should have a separate ministry for railway and transport, a separate ministry for sanitation and local government, separate ministry for tourism and chieftaincy. President Mahama is saying we are going to do major realignment, streamlining of all of these ministries. Then in addition to that, he doesn't stop there. The lean and efficient government that President Mahama is talking about. He is also saying that all of these amorphous presidential staffers who have mushroomed overnight and we have been raising concerns in parliament, they don't listen to us. As we speak, some of the portfolios of these presidential staffers, when you hear it, you collapse. Ghana is currently paying somebody who calls himself a diaspora church mobilization officer. Can you believe it? He's also a presidential staff who is mobilizing the churches all over the world. <laughs> and only Ghana must pay for it. He didn't go to the UN so that we all contribute. You know, so that all governments, all countries will contribute. Only Ghana is paying for a diaspora church mobilization officer. Ghana is paying somebody at the, at the presidency called an ambassador for diaspora youth affairs. Can you believe it? When we have a foreign minister, two deputies, we have 63 diplomatic missions across the globe. Yet, we have to pay somebody at the presidency to mobilize the youth in the diaspora. President Mahama is saying that he's going to cut out all of this waste, all of this amorphous and nebulous and totally useless positions are going to be removed and he's going to run the most efficient and lean government in the history of our country. The other thing that has excited a lot of Ghanaians under the governance thematic area of the manifesto is ORA, Operation Recover All Loot. President Mahama is saying that the next NDC government is going to ruthlessly and uncompromisingly 
pursue accountability by launching inquiries and forensic audits with the view of recovering all the loot. So we are serving a clear notice to all those looters who think that they are going to keep the loot. The Ghanaian people are saying that they are going to vote for the NDC so that we will recover all the loot. And I can, I can quickly, I can quickly run through a few of the obvious targets. Those who are keeping our two million dollars under the guise of coming to deliver a sky train, and you heard the chief will talk about it, and fail to deliver, they should very quickly, as soon as the election results are announced, if they don't want oral officials, operation, recover all root officials, and I'm praying, I'm lobbying hard to be part of that team. With Basitel, you know, as by We are lobbying very hard. If they don't want any trouble with the Ghanaian people, they should just prefer to refund our two million dollars for that very dubious sky train project. You are even struggling with your railways, mm. land, land, you are nowhere. And then suddenly you say you are moving into the skies. Just a, a scam. Then those chunky shakes who came here that they are coming to give us Sputnik V vaccines. And the former health minister, Jimamie, who said COVID, he was so confused, he wasn't thinking straight. So he allowed those <coughs> chunky shakes to deceive him. They should prepare. Our two million dollars will have to be refunded. As to how a Russian-made vaccine we could be roaming, the Akufado Baumia government could be roaming in Dubai for sheikhs to provide those vaccines remains a mystery. Mm -hmm. Then Kari Summers, who is keeping us six million dollars under that national cathedral scam, he should also prepare to refund that money. In Japan, 12 million dollars. Kualugu, 11.9 million dollars. Mota Angel. 2.5 million dollars, and all of those SML, the ambulance spare pass, the president's daughters and their business partners, and all those people, they should just better, you know. And if they start negotiating now to refund the money, even before the election, it will really, really help. We are passionate about Operation Recover All Route. We mean every, every, every part of this. Every single letter has meaning. Don't forget that it will also affect the land looters, those who have engaged in state capture, and I'll be coming to that. We are also pledging that we will launch a forensic audit and an inquiry into the National Cathedral scandal and seek broad consensus on what should happen to what is described now as the world's most expensive it. We are talking about over 339 million Ghana cities. That's just our tax monies alone. I have not added what they collected from churches, you know, unsuspecting Christians and others. You know, they are US operations and all. Just our taxes. 58.1 million dollars. Over 339 million Ghana cities. And all we see, if you read Bishop Dacke, what did? Mill's resignation letter. He said his conscience will not allow him to continue to serve on the board. He has built greater churches for far less. Far less than 58.1 million dollars. We have spent 58.1 million dollars and all he kept seeing is a pit. Which I'm told is now described as the world's most expensive pit there will be a full-scale inquiry. Then don't forget all the demolitions that occurred because of this national cathedral. So there are so many aspects to this puzzle. That double identity pastor who's also keeping at 2.6 million cities, Sibuatin, Kwabler, UJF, all of those parts of this hydra-headed scandal 
will have a special inquiry on that. I mean, when you deceive God, you deceive the clergy, and you deceive the Ghanaian people, you must face a special consequence for that. And um, you can expect that the next NDC government will do just that. The manifesto also pledges that there will be forensic audits into all the scandals that have occurred. And you know it's a tall list. So you name them, whether it's the COVID-19 management scandal, SML, Ijapa, Masset, EDS, Skytrip, Pualubu, appearance fees, the ambulance spare parts, the illegal social source con contract, all of them. It's been, it's been a government since Ijapa. It's been a government of uh, one day, one scandal. We will go into all of them. We, on our campaign trail, we meet many people who tell us that we are voting for you just because of accountability. And that is why our manifesto is resetting Ghana for jobs, accountability, and prosperity. So accountability is key. The others are running away from accountability because they have been neck deep in plunging us into this quagmire. We are going to demand accountability. Our manifesto also is proposing to ruthlessly end the menace of Galamse, which poses an existential threat. As we speak, Ghana Water Limited have put out statements that at this rate, in the next few years, we'll have to import water. They say the Pryor River is gone. The turbidity levels are at a level that does not even allow them to treat water. So as we speak, central western region, parts of greater Accra, water crisis, <laughs> Only the NDC manifesto is pledging a ruthless combat of this menace, which poses an existential threat. Clearly, when you listen to the Western Regional Minister, you listen to MPP parliamentary candidates and MPP stalwarts, their regional chairman and all of that, they are complicit, they are neck deep. And I listened to Mr. Erastos, Donko, this morning, and he said that, look, it is the ruling party officials who have just made this fight worthless and useless because they are complicit. They are the real people who are behind the Galamse menace. You need a new government that will come and confront this menace because it doesn't make sense. A whole government with a national security apparatus, you have dissects, mysects, rexects, all the security councils, DCs, regional ministers, police commanders, NIB officials, national security operators, and all of them are saying that they are helpless because of unarmed Ghanaians, even if they are armed. Can they match the billions that we approve in parliament every year for national security? and see where we are. See where we are. Look at how our river bodies are looking. Apart from the Volta River, all our rivers are gone because of Kalamse. A deceptive president who told us that he was putting his presidency on the line. Apparently, nothing was put on there. There was even no line. <laughs> the NDC manifesto is also saying that we'll collaborate with the judiciary to establish a special court for persons whom adverse findings have been made against them by the Auditor General and Parliament. This has been a long-standing conundrum. What happens to those who are indicted by the Auditor General? And when they appear before PAC, and PAC also affirms those audit findings, what happens? There has been a lacuna for many years. Nothing really happens and they get away. If we are lucky and there are some you know, surcharging and retrieval by the Auditor General, then we get something back. The Auditor General, the, the, pardon me, the Attorney General has not been prosecuted. We are saying that we are going to work with the judiciary to establish special courts just to deal with all of these people engaged in malfeasance, engaged in just financial diversions, blatant corruption, uh, which is really bleeding this country. The next NDC government is also saying that we will introduce legislation to usher in a new 
era of government scholarships. And I am particularly excited about this uh, because as a former deputy minister for education, working in the tertiary space, I saw how uh, the scholarship regime was uncoordinated. Um, so many scholarship points all over. Uh, the presidency has one, and the scholarship secretariat, you have the GMPC, you have the COCO board, uh, you have Get Fund, and scattered all over the place. We are saying that for the first time in this country's history, we are going to have one legislation to coordinate scholarship, bring all of them in one pool, and align them to national development. Should we be sending people out to go and do some kind of courses? I don't want to offend anybody. How does that really align with our national development? Where should we be? What are human resource gaps? In the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 15 years, what should we do? You go to our districts, they tell you critical shortage of various professionals, and yet our national scholarship regime does not align with those needs. But worst of all, ladies and gentlemen, the, corrupt, the corruption which has engulfed this country has also taken over <coughs> scholarships. So you have politically exposed persons, ministers, MPs, government officials, top, top politicians, fighting with the vulnerable, poor, vulnerable people in North Tong, in Mubrugu Yoyo, Sablugu, in Adaklu, and elsewhere. Why and elsewhere? Brilliant but needy people. Fighting with top politicians, elite who are so endowed, who have resources, they are grabbing the scholarships for themselves. And we all know the story. One of them is uh, out there campaigning. He, he didn't even show remorse. You know, he has, he has no shame. You know. Yes. You know. So we are saying that the new law will totally prohibit politically exposed persons. You are not allowed, you can't benefit. If you are a government minister serving under President Mohammed, you, your wife, your children cannot benefit. No appointee can benefit from scholarships. We are going to have a law and it will be clear. And they think we don't know what they have introduced. For the first time in this country's history, you have girl boys around scholarships, where people now have to pay they come to us always. We, we get their petitions. We know, we parliament. The chief whip is here. We have a petition. Go to boys. If you don't pay, how can brilliant by needy people come up with 80,000, 100,000, 120,000 citizens? I mean, the corruption, it has no limits. It has no, no conscionable levels. Even poor, vulnerable people, they are exploiting them. So we are saying that, look, enough of this madness, we are going to have a new law to regulate scholarships and make sure that the scholarships are reserved for the poor, the vulnerable, needy, but brilliant, and those who are going to pursue courses that align with our strategic national development objectives. Then we are also saying that we are going to wage a ruthless war against state capture. We are going to have a new piece of legislation that will prohibit politicians from buying state assets. We have had enough. Enough is enough. Cabinet ministers wanting to buy our hotels. Uh, some of them die in their will. You see our forests in their will, our Ramsar site. They are willing to offer sea forever and all of that. We are saying enough is enough. We are going to ban all politicians from buying state assets. Then this part of the legislation also excites me. The legislation is going to make it compulsory for Ghana to have a national assets register. So all our lands will be on that register. You have heard us in Parliament. It is, uh, and for Titusley, it was the Honorable Akoja who asked that question in February 2022, more than two and a half years ago, asking the lands minister, the state of our public lands, who they have sold to, how much they sold it for, if any are left. Up to now, it's been such a tussle. They say they don't have the data. They, they don't really, they are still compiled and all of that. It's a, it's a tedious exercise. Yeah. And yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, anytime they want to sell, 
They know where the land is allocated to sell. They know where the bungalows are to demolish them and sell the land. We have been asking Works and Housing Minister, how many bungalows do we have in Ghana? They can tell us. Those of you follow the proceedings of the Assurances Committee. So we are saying that enough of that. We are going to have a national asset register. Everything that belongs to Ghana belongs to the Ghanaian people, you and I. Whether hotels, forests, Ramsar sites, lands, cars, everything, it will be on that register. And then all of us can protect it. The reason why some of these politicians don't want to have this register, don't want to publish the list, is because they don't know, they don't want you to know what is a state asset so that when they are selling them off cheaply, uh, you will not uh, be able to know. And uh, for those of you who have followed our latest exposés, if you think that these policies are not important, just follow our latest exposés and see what we are losing. Did you follow the latest exposé on the cantonment lands, the lands at La Wireless, AU Village? You saw how cheaply they sold them. Can you believe cantonment land? They were selling a plot for just 183,000 Ghana cities. Can you believe that? And if you, if you see the top officials, I've published the list, nobody can challenge that list. Kate Jemfua, she bought her 31st August 2022, the MPP Women's Organizer, Ibrahim Mohamed Awal, then Minister of Tourism, 30th of November 2020, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ines Yedu Addison, 31st August 2022, Elsie Adouawaji, Deputy Governor, 27th August 2020, Maxwell Opoku Afari, Deputy Governor, Bank of Ghana. He bought his from President Akufuado, 31st August 2022. Joseph Wani Enu, the CEO of Kokobo, bought his from the President, 30th October 2020. Dr. Janet Ampedufo, the Chairperson Presidential Emoluments Committee, also bought his from President Akufuado on 29th June 2022. Kwabna Mante Jektenyako, board member, Ghana Airport Company, President Akufuado's appointee. Bought his from President Kufuado on 22nd October 2022. His Excellency Anselm Raswell, Ajete Sowa, Ghana's High Commissioner to Canada. Also bought his from President Kufuado on 14 October 2020. Anna Asare Odro, former NPP Women's Organizer, Holland Chapter. Bought his from President Kufuado on 25 February 2021. Ken Oforiata's Enterprise Assurance. You know Ken Oforiata doesn't miss out. Uh, <laughs> Enterprise Assurance. Enterprise Life Assurance. Can of Ferretta's Enterprise Life Assurance. 15 December 2023 is when he grabbed his from his cousin. This was a family affair. Uh, then you have Georgina Wood on the list. 15 October 2020, you have uh, the President's appointed board chairman at uh, SIC at the time. 14 October 2020, Kwesi Abuaje Etuya. You know, this is what is going on. And if you see how much people are paying, 183,752 Ghana so less than $11,000. Meanwhile, on the market, the open market, they are telling me that it's between $700,000 and $1 million Ghana cities for a plot. Dollars. Dollars, $700,000 to $1 million. So, if you look at the the exchange rate. This, they are grabbing this for less than $11,000. This is pure Dongkomi, what they call Dongkomi. It's, it's just a game. And, and what makes matters worse? They don't advertise. Nobody hears about it. If I tell you how many MDP people have called me, top, top. The, ah, so, this is, so are they still selling? How do they even sell? I mean, how come some of us, we are also in the government, we don't hear about it? You know? You know? Even some of the other members. So this is tight, 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 you know, name. This is inside that is real cocoa food. They, they won't pass you, they won't hear about it, you know. We are saying that enough is enough. We are going to prohibit and abolish all of these things. I'm going to run through quickly so that uh, uh, we, we, we can take your questions. For journalists, we are also heavy on your welfare. We are saying that we are going to repeal all anti-press freedom laws and reverse the current climate of fear, intimidation, harassment, and safety, as well as broadening the frontiers of media freedoms and development. So all of those anti-press freedoms that 
press freedom legislation they've been using in the name of you have caused fear and panic and others, and then uh, you are picked up by national security. Remember what your colleagues, Kele Kuda and others, went through. Manasseh Azuri had to flee this country on two occasions to South Africa and to Germany. We are saying that uh, we are going to stop that. We'll, we'll revisit the Media Development Fund so that working with GJ, the NMC, you can get uh, financial support uh, to enhance your career. Uh, so we are not going to uh, be bribing journalists so that they can't carry out their work fearlessly and advance the cause of democracy as uh, operators in the fourth uh, uh, estate of the realm. We will transparently have a media development fund which will seek your welfare. We've done it before uh, uh, in our last government. We're going to do that again. Working with your leaders, uh, your fraternity, will have a very transparent mechanism of assessing the fund. Then we also say we are going to reopen investigations into the major unresolved cases, including the Ayawaso West Wogo election violence, the 2020 election killings, and you've noticed that it's one of the very solid grounds that our national chairman and our national executives have provided the Peace Council. Six grounds, and top amongst them, the 2020 election killings. There ought to be justice. And we are saying that we will not forget about the families, the relatives of those eight people who were killed. We will reopen investigations, and those who did that must face the full rigors of the law, including other unresolved matters. Your colleague Ahmed Hussein Swali um, has become a cold case. The government doesn't appear interested. We are going to reopen that. Others like Silas Wolochame, who was killed uh, under very gory circumstances, we're going to reopen all of those those killings. The next item, as I prepare to run. We are also saying that we are going to amend the Public Procurement Act to stop the abuse of single source. And we mean this. Those of you who have read the 2023 Auditor General's report on cocoa roads, you will be most scandalized. The Auditor General discovered that the Akufuadu Baumiada, who in opposition, promised, and they put out statements, tweets, Facebook posts that the era of single sourcing, sole sourcing is coming to an end. Will you believe that it is now rather the dominant procurement method? The Auditor General discovered that 87% of cocoa road contracts were single source. Can you believe that? 87%. Only 13% were competitive. Single source, which should rather be the exception under this government. It is the norm. Can you believe that? And the Auditor General didn't stop there. He decided to compare values. And what he found out, he was so shocked. The Auditor General discovered that when you compare the 13% awarded competitive with the 87%, the 87% contracts were three times bloated, inflated, three times, 300%. So if we pay for 10 kilometers of road, we could actually have gotten 30 kilometers. Now, you, you know what makes this even worse? Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's brother, Abraham Baumia, was at the center of this country. His company, Resource Access Limited. The same day, they gave him two major single source contracts. Same day. In the morning, then they call, no, it's not enough. You know, the family needs more. You know, come for another one. Can you believe that? The people who said, and at the time, President Mohammed's record was just around 20% to 25% single source. Now, Auditor General, not me say or not Sunday JP, it's not the NBC Communication Directory. Read the 2023 Auditor General's report 87%. So these days, you don't hear about me any longer talk about dealing with the abuse of single sources because the families at the center, he and his brothers, they're looting like there's no tomorrow with royalties paid to Kennedy and Japan. Yeah. They're looting like there's no tomorrow. The NDC manifesto also pledges to usher in a new dawn 
of foreign relations to enhance the image of Ghana and protect diplomatic enclaves as required under international law. Uh, we are saying that we will sanction perpetrators who demolish diplomatic properties belonging to the Nigerian High Commission and the Bulgarian Embassy. We make a renewed pledge to all diplomats in Ghana that under international law, under the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, we shall protect their enclaves and we shall make sure that we pursue a foreign policy that positions Ghana in the Committee of Nations as a friendly nation. We will not be, President Mahama will not be caught snitching on neighboring countries mm -hmm. and uh, virtually taking sides and engaging in diplomatic engagement and for power which will undermine the stability, the security of our country. President Mahama would not engage in those diplomatic four parts we have seen under President Akufo. And finally, uh, and this is quite a personal one, I'm so excited about this one. I'm really over the moon about this one. President Mahama said, you heard him, uh, when he outlined his 120 day, and it's the, it's the only manifesto so far, with what I'll do in 120 days, so you can hold me. I'm not going to come and then forget about it. Right from day one, I'm going to get to work. And within 120 days, you should know which aspects of this manifesto, as President, President Mahama is going to focus attention on. And President Mahama says, that's part of this 120 day social pledge with the Ghanaian people, the social contract with the Ghanaian people. He's going to demonstrate empathetic and responsible leadership by taking steps to probe the VRA spillage from the Akosum where bond dams. As we speak, it's been a year. People are still living in tents. 1,360 fellow compatriots. Can you believe that? Fellow Ghanaians are living in tents. And they don't want to be accountable. They don't want to even be responsible. <coughs> President Mahama is saying that within the first 120 days, that would be his priority. To move the people out of the tents, to house them, and to compensate the victims of the VRA spillage. So this is the new governance paradigm that President Mahama is pledging. And you can trust him that under President Mahama, who have ethical, who have incorruptible, who have empathetic 